Located in the heart of Dublin's north inner city, one place has provided acute paediatric care for almost 140 years. A home from home which offers safety at times of uncertainty. This building tells a story of hope, determination and strength. And tonight we go behind its doors to share the stories from the theatres and wards, to meet the staff who dedicate their lives to the care of Ireland's children, and to follow the journey of families and their little patients who are in need of vital and life-saving treatment. Welcome to Temple Street Children's Hospital. Matt was born in September 98. He was a small baby compared to my other babies. He was 7'4 and he was two weeks early. For the first five years, he's a beautiful looking child. He's had fabulous skin, fabulous hair, bright eyes. His only problem was he wasn't putting on an awful lot of weight. He just, he was painfully thin. My father and mother were mine to my kids one weekend and Molly was not quite a year. And Molly was grand solid baby when she was born, a good size. And my mother was picking Molly out of the bath and was afraid to pick Matt up in case she'd break him. And he was five at this stage. Um, she got very upset, so my father said, bring him to a doctor. Bring him to the hospital, bring him somewhere. So I got a letter from my doctor and I went into Temple Street. After the first x-ray, um, the consultant or the radiographer came out and said, um, we'd like to do another one. So alarm bells were ringing in my head. Um, I was trying to work through my head what, what could be wrong. And Matt was such a clingy child, never left my side. A nurse came in and said, will you come and do colouring with me? And he went off, he left me. Then um, those box of tissues kind of pushed towards me. And that's when he told me, he said, this, from the x-ray alone, he said, I can diagnose that Matthew has cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is a um, genetic disorder and it affects a lot of organs in the body, um, primarily the lungs, um, the intestinal system, pancreas, it can affect the liver, the sweat glands, reproductive organs. So children present with either recurrent chest infections or maybe failing to thrive where the child is hungry and eating a lot but still not gaining weight. He can't clear his lungs is the basic thing. Um, I think it was the physio that told us that it's like chewing gum in your lungs. Like if you have a bad cold, you can cough and spit it out. It's not as easy for a CF patient to spit it out. It's stuck to the lungs and that's what does damage. Living with a chronic lung disease, Matt attends the hospital on a regular basis. And today he is back to receive one of his ongoing tests. But all I could think going through my head was, When's he going to die? He started explaining things and I said, there's no point in explaining. I'm not, not in receive mode. I just, I, I've taken enough in. I, I just want to pick Matt up and bring him home. And that's kind of what I did. Hence he said that we could come back in the next day and meet the whole CF team. Since that, you're, you're hearing about, you know, life expectancy is 21, 22, and you don't want to know that about your own child, but every CF patient is completely different. Um, there was extensive damage done to his lungs between not and five years of age because he wasn't treated or diagnosed or anything like that. Between five and ten, there was very little damage. So now that he's getting the proper treatment, it's making a huge difference. In accident and emergency, a young boy named Erkin Batter has been transferred to the resuscitation department. <laughs> Communication is difficult and Dad is understandably concerned. 
He tried to open it. But he can't get it. And I was his body at the time. Was his body shaking or was he standing I took handover from the ambulance crew um, and it's very important to take a good handover just to see exactly what the situation was when they arrived and um, if there was any treatment en route to us. Before that moment. He'd been unwell for the past week to ten days at home with temperatures on and off and um, he'd had some vomiting and diarrhoea. But then today what triggered the ambulance journey in was that he had some kind of what sounds to be seizure type activity at home. His parents actually just picked him up and ran to the nearest hospital, which was the Rotunda. So the Rotunda just transferred him then directly here to us. It's quite flat on arrival. For that reason and the history that the ambulance crew had given us, I just transferred him into the res resuscitation area. The nurse that's allocated to resus will take a history, a physical assessment, um, head to toe examination check and airway breathing circulation um, and the doctor will be involved in that as well. I suppose we're starting our investigations as to what had actually caused this seizure activity um, and initiating any emergency treatment that needs to start then. Did you give him any medicine today? Yeah. Did he have any on your Did he feel warm? Was he feeling very warm? Today. Today, when before he started having oh, no. his seizure. No. He was very cold. Was it, were his hands and feet cold? All the shaking, his whole body shaking? The whole body shaking is me. Day ward, Alana has arrived with her mum, Kira. She's uh, she's 14 months and she has a blocked ear duct in her left eye. Her eye was just real sticky and it kept watering thing and getting a little infections in it and things like that. She's got quite a quite a common problem with with uh, babies. She was born with two blocked tear ducts, and what this leaves you with is a, a constantly sticky, watery eye. So the parents go to their GP and they get an antibiotic eye drop. And this works wonderfully for a week and then immediately after they stop using it, the eyes are watery and sticky again. She's into everything. She's a real happy baby. And when she wakes up from her nap, she, her eyes would be sticky and things like that. It would be divorced, so she gets a little infection show. Like, it's a little bit grey now as well. It's, it's kind of a bit infected like, at the minute. Today, Alana will undergo surgery for the first time, and Mum is apprehensive. It's my all day. I'm to leave. She had to be fast as well from like, last night. Haven't you? Most blocked tear ducts resolve spontaneously by the time the child is a year old. Um, so it's a bit messy for the first year, and some of them resolve even in a few weeks, and some go the full year. But little Alana was unlucky, and she, she just didn't. And once the child is a year old, they're either not going to unblock, and uh, they need an operation. I was just so nervous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. It's the first time kind of in hospital, stay, like not staying over, but in. it's just a bit scary for me as well. <laughs> she doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the cystic fibrosis unit, Matt has begun his lung function test. He attends the hospital regularly to assess his condition and for further medication. The lungs in particular produce mucus. You and I produce it every single day of the week. But with cystic fibrosis, their mucus is thick and sticky. And that makes it difficult to cough up. And sometimes it might be lurking on the lung and not being expectorated. We're living with it now for eight years and it's, it's no worse than being an asthmatic, as far as I'm concerned at the moment anyway, um, and having to take an inhaler all the time. It's, everything is doable and it's, I won't say it's easy, but it's all, it's all doable. And um, he's had a number of infections. The initial concerns was to get his lung function up higher and to clear the chest. From the x-ray that they had done in the hospital, um, you can see the lungs and you can see how cloudy they are. And as the antibiotics worked, the next x-ray he got, you could see the clouding was gone. Um, 
so then he's he's fit to go home and then you have to try and keep him well. He's just finding all the We visit the hospital now on a regular basis because he's on three monthly IVs. We go in and we will see the whole team. Um, we have a full multidisciplinary team there which has been proven um, to add an extra five years onto a child's life. Big breath in. Right in, right At each clinic visit we will um, assess his lung function and we have a dedicated lung function lab here um, that have very detailed testing which tells us his, his respiratory effort and his ability to blow out basically and that gives us his lung capacity. The lung function anyway is monitored every three months. Uh, sometimes you'll find with Matthew his lung function may have dipped but his mum will be able to tell us actually his energy is down and he's coughing or he's expectorating and the sputum he's bringing up is a little bit not as clear as normal. The physio comes up and has a listen. The consultant comes in and has a listen to his chest and checks the stomach because the liver can be damaged. There can be problems with the kidneys, there can be problems with the bowels getting blocked. There is a lot that can go wrong, but they keep an eye on it all the time. Everything is checked. What he has now in him is called a portacath, which is a permanent line. I was reluctant to begin with because it's putting something in his body and it's going to look different. It's, he's going to look a bit more different. So to have something blatantly put there, I just, I wasn't happy. The surgeon who was doing it was insisting it goes under his arm, which is brilliant. Now, if he's doing swimming lessons or going swimming, he'd prefer to wear a T-shirt. Um, recently, he was changing for football, and in front of his teammates, he took off his top, and it was blatantly there. Nobody batted an eyelid. Um, so he's got more used to it. For Matt and his mum, they wait to hear the result, which offers a clear indication of their success in what is a continual fight against this disease. I think numbers are very encouraging for parents, too. They sometimes like to see the, the percentages and see what the end result is. So please God, in, in another seven days when we send him home post-IV treatment, his numbers will be elevated and up. Toddler Know-How, smanutrition.ie, sponsors Temple Street Children's Hospital. Well, we have a chance to get your